Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to go uh, over the lecture number four. Um, lecture number four, we're going to re review the interpretation of the simplex tableau. It's from your handout from uh, page 30 to 35. You can download the handout on Canvas. And the linear programming model is giving 2x1 minus x2 plus 0x3 plus 0x4. Um, Try to minimize this function subject to uh, negative x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to 2. 2x1, 2x1 um, plus x2 plus x4 equal to 6. So, but we present it in the matrix format. So if we choose x1 and x2, this portion as a basis, and our <clears throat> first two columns as a basis, we have negative 1, 1, 2, and 1 as a basis, and that means x1 and x2 are uh, currently the basic variable. We can calculate the B inverse, okay, negative 1 third, 1 third, 2 third, 1 third. And using B inverse times B, we can calculate the current basic solution, and that will be 4 third and a 10 thirds. Both of them are greater than or equal to 0, non-negative. Uh, non now, we also know that uh, B times XB plus N times XN equals to the right-hand side B, which is the right-hand side 2 and 6. And xb equals the b inverse times b minus b inverse times n times xn. So <clears throat> we can write out the whole equation right here. x1 and x2 equals to b inverse times b times b inverse times n times XB, uh, xn. Once we multiply out, we can actually find up as the fourth third right here. Okay plus one-third of x3, plus one-third of x3, minus one-third of x4, and ten-third minus two-third of x3, minus one-third of x4. So this is the equation, but currently x3 and x4 are zero, so this part actually is zero, the yellow part. Take a look at the next one. We can calculate their objective function value, z hat, equals to the c transpose times x, and c equals to cb transpose times xb, because cm part is, uh, uh, sorry, xm part is 0, equals to 2 negative 1 times one, uh, x1 and x2, which equals to negative 2 third plus 4 third of x3 minus 1 third of x4. So that's our objective function value. Of course, currently x3 and x4 are 0, so this part is uh, not effective. So the objective function right now is negative 2 thirds. And we can calculate the Z, uh, zj minus cj for non-basic column, uh, which is x3 and x4. Let's take a look at the z3 minus c3. Z3, how to calculate Z3 quickly? CB transpose times B inverse times A3 is equal to also CB transpose times Y3, which is B inverse times A3. Okay, A is the original matrix column 3, minus C3 is the cost coefficient for uh, X3, which is a 0. So CB is actually <coughs> 2, negative 1 times B inverse times the column original uh, original tableau column for x3 which is 1 0 minus the cost coefficient for x3 equals to 0 and we'll get a 4 third okay 4 third z4 minus c4 can be calculated similar way cb transpose times B inverse times a4 minus c4 and c4 is again 0 and this part is calculated 
Now the only thing is a4 equals to 0, 1, so 1, 0. So we get a 1 third. Here is a question for you. Why is Z1 minus C1 equals to 0 and Z2 minus C2 equal to 0, those two columns? And can you verify that? It will come up later on in our homework and some of the exam exercise. So, <clears throat> like I said, YJ equals to B inverse times AJ, which is this part, this part right here. So y1 equals to b inverse times a1, okay? So you can see that b inverse times a1, which is negative 1 and 2, come up with identity column 1, 0. y2 also is a basic column. y2 equals to b inverse times a2. So b inverse times a2 is 1, 1 equals to 0, 1. For the non-basic column, we can calculate y3 and y4. y3 equals negative one-third and two-third. y4 equals negative, <coughs> uh, sorry, one-third and one-third. The calculation is b inverse times the original matrix column, original column from the problem. So this is a fairly straightforward so far and show you how to without using Simpax Tableau, how to calculate uh, ZJ minus CJ and the column after pivot. Okay, here is the ta Tableau to review this. Okay, so you can see that <coughs> for Z3 and uh, Z3 minus C3 and Z4 minus C4 supposed to be on this non-basic column, row zero, right here. You can see that this is negative four third and one third which is right here okay and then we know only the x4 is able to in entering the uh, basis since x4 is positive so every unit of <coughs> x4 increase from zero to one every unit increase is improving objective function by negative one third. And the current objective function is negative two third. The current solution for x, x1 is four third, and current solution for x2 is 10 third. Okay, and this is the corresponding cost coefficient column, and we can do the minima ratio test. Okay, so x4 entering and 4 third divided by 1 third will be 4. 10 third divided by 1 third equals to 10. So we can calculate that. So we know that x3 is entering, uh, x4 is entering the basis, x3 is stays 0. So we have uh, representing x1 and x2 in terms of x4. So this is fairly easy. The 4 third, the 10 third, which is from here minus one-third of x4 and one-third of x4, which this in the future is supposed to be greater than or equal to zero. So with these two inequality constraint, x1 equals to four-third minus one-third of x4 greater than zero, x2 equals to ten-third of a, uh, minus one-third of x4 greater than zero. Based on these two conditions, the x4 cannot exist four. So therefore, the minima ratio test is minimize of the 4 and the 10. So we know that in the new tableau, x4 going to be equals to 4 and x1 becomes a 0, meaning x4 entering the basis and x1 leaving the basis. So this is a pretty much uh, the drawing what I have. <clears throat> okay, this is the uh, x4 when x4 gra uh, gradually uh, increase see what situation happened. So this first one is x2, which is starting currently in 10 third, x2, x currently 10 third. When <clears throat> x4 keep increasing, the value of x2 decrease. When <clears throat> x4 equals to 10, x2 becomes a zero at this point. Next is the x1. x1 currently equals to 4 third, okay? Um, 
based on this equation as a 4 third minus 1 third of x4. So x4 uh, originally equal to 0. When x4 start increasing all the way, x1 decrease correspondingly until x, uh, the <clears throat> x4 equals to the 4 and x1 reach the 0. So between x1 and x2, x1 reaches 0 first as x4 increases. So the mean one ratio test uh, mean ratio test equals to 4. So this is where we have to stop for increasing the x4. Otherwise, x1 or x2 could be start going negative in that case. So the current new basic solution, we can see that uh, basic uh, solution, feasible solution, x1 leaving the basis, x2 equals to 2, and up to this point when x4 equals to 4. So x2 equals to 2, and x4 take the minimum ratio uh, value. We continue this iteration. We see that now the B matrix changes to A4 and A1 because A4 replaced X1, uh, A1 as the basis, so 0, 1, 1, 1. Calculate the corresponding B inverse, negative 1, 1, 1, 0. We can recalculate the new basic variable X4 and X2, B inverse times B, and B inverse times N times Xn. Okay, Xn. So <clears throat> Xn now is X1 and X3. So we can represent the current basic solution equals to 4 plus 3x, uh, x1 minus x3. And x2 equals to 2, at this point, minus x1 plus x3. x1 and x3 currently take the value of 0. So this part is actually 0. So currently solution is two, uh, 4 and 2. Look at the objective function value, C transpose times X equals to CB transpose times XB plus CN transpose times XN equals to <clears throat> 0 and negative 1. Uh, remember the X4 is the slack variable, so its corresponding cost, co cost coefficient is 0. And the cost coefficient corresponding to X2 is negative 1 equals X4 and X2 plus 2, 0, which is the cost for coefficient for x1 and cost coefficient for x3. We can replace the x4 and an x2 using this equation, plug it in, so we can get us <clears throat> actually a uh, summary solution is negative 2 plus x1 plus x3. So this is uh, the current objective function I have for the new tableau, negative 2 plus x1 plus x3. But x1 and x3 currently taking zero, uh, <clears throat> value of 0, so therefore the objective function is simply negative 2. By look at this, we understand since these two are positive sign, so if I want to minimize my objective function, minimize my objective function, if I increase x1 or increase x3, actually, <clears throat> I will deteriorate the current objective function value. Okay, I will deteriorate the objective function value. So we can, by uh, looking this, by looking the zj minus cj column. So zj minus cj, z for the non-basic column is z1 minus c1, cb transpose times b inverse times a1. a1 is the original column for column 1 minus C1, which is the cost coefficient for X1, which is 2. So 0, negative 1, which is a CB. CB is right here. Okay? And B inverse times A1 minus 2 equals to negative 1. Look at the ZJ minus CJ, we call the reduced cost for X3. CB transpose times B inverse times A3 minus C3. C3 is 0, and A3 is the original column from the simplex tableau for X3. 
and result is negative one. Both of them are <coughs> negative. Okay, both of them are negative. So we know we can no longer improve my objective function and the current solution on hand. It is the optimal face, uh, feasible solution. It's a unique optimal feasible solution. And currently the optimal solution will be zero two zero four. Next, we uh, summarize the result, the observation we have using a numerical uh, example. To summarize as a lemma, we call the uniqueness of the optimum. If our <coughs> currently x uh, star, x bar star, is a basic feasible solution with all the zj minus cj for every non-basic variable xj, then x star is a unique optimal feasible solution. So if <clears throat> x star is a basic feasible solution, it should have the form of b inverse times b for the basic uh, variable and zero for the non-basic variable. And the z star, which is the optimal, uh, currently optimal objective function value equals to cb transpose times x star, okay? x optimal equals to cb transpose times b inverse times b if <clears throat> y bar is any other feasible solution with y bar is not equal to x star then the the objective corresponding uh, objective function value will be c transpose times y so we don't know why is that so we see if there is any possibility y could be having a better objective function value than uh, z star. So let's calculate the z star minus z, which is the difference between uh, the current <coughs> objective function to the objective function value corresponding to y. Equals to, for all the j is non-basic variable, zj minus cj times yj, which is the <coughs> uh, solution. Okay, so all the non-basic column for the non-basic variable in yj less than zero. Uh, why is that? Because first, yj doesn't matter if it's basic or non-basic, they have to take a value of either zero or a positive number. And this, if the zj minus cj corresponding to all the j are negative, so the negative times a positive and non-negative will be strictly less than zero. And therefore, we can see that <clears throat> z star is always going to be strictly less than z. Okay, so that proves this particular lemma. Okay. <clears throat> this slide talk about <clears throat> Uh, the outcome of the linear programming models and they're summarized in this slide uh, represent their four possible outcome and the first one is one unique optimal solution you have one single optimal solution it always happens on the corner point or extreme point uh, we referring to second <clears throat> is alternative optimal solution and which means the infinite number of solution uh, exists. And usually this optimal solution happens in, in between two consecutive, two adjacent uh, extreme point. And every point between these two uh, adjacent, adjacent extreme point are also the optimal solution. In this case, we call it infinite number of solution. And the third possible outcome of the problem is so-called degeneracy and usually result from uh, the prob linear programming model have a redundant constraint. And the last portion will be <clears throat> this, uh, the last possible outcome is uh, the problem is infeasible. And which in the real world this happens most of the time and majority of the effort for or analyst is trying to make the problem feasible by relaxing or changing some of the constraint and 
your jobs will be figuring out which constraint to relax and which constraint to modify in order to get a, at least one feasible solution.